Hey folks and welcome back and in today's video we'll be looking into Kubernetes custom resources. Now this is a two part series video in which in this part we will be exploring how we can create a custom resource definition and then deploy it onto a Kubernetes cluster. In my next part we will then create a Spring Boot application which will be a Kubernetes controller that handles requests for any kind of custom resource definition instance creations, updations or any kind of deletions. So with this, let's start with the Kubernetes custom resource definition. Before actually we start creating a Kubernetes custom resource definition, let's actually understand how the Kubernetes resource management works. So for this, let's look at this particular diagram. Now, if you see here, whenever we use the kubectl create command or the apply command and we provide it a particular file, say for example, when we apply a deployment, what happens is we are actually talking to the API server. So what this API server does is it, it just stores this particular part into the database here. Next, what happens is we have this particular special controller, which is called as a scheduler. What it does is that it keeps on pulling the API server to ask if any pods have to be created as such. So now what happens when it finds this particular definition, it then inserts into the database via the API server, some information wherein this pod has to be spun on. So now what it does, it actually makes a call to the API server to actually put in this particular information on which particular node this particular pod has to be scheduled. Next, what happens is we have this special kubelets, which are also like controllers, which keep on polling the API server to ask if any new pods have to be created. So then what it does, it figures out that yeah, on my particular node, I need to actually spawn this particular pod. So it then gets the definition and spawns the particular pods onto its node. So with this, I actually just scratch the surface of how actually this Kubernetes resource management thing works. So first, what we are going to do is we're going to define our Kubernetes custom resource definition. I already have this particular definition here. So I have this my CRD here. So this is my custom resource definition. It's a very big one that you can make out from here, but I'll break it down and make it more simple. Now let's divide this into various parts. So let me explain this section of this particular definition. Now, if you see here, we have this API version. Now this API version specifies the version of the API that we're trying to use. And we're going to specify here that is a kind that is the custom resource definition. Now we are creating a custom resource definition. So that's the type that we are specifying here. Then we have this metadata section and then we have the spec section. Let's first look at the spec section and then come back to the metadata section. So now if you see here in the spec section, you need to specify a group, group ID that is here. So I've given here as com.amrut.prabhu and then we have to specify the name of the kind that we are trying to define here. So now I have given it a name called as mycrd and the plural form of this is mycrds. Next, if you see here, we have this scope. Now this scope actually defines like where this custom resource definition instances would be created. Like are they going to be created within a particular namespace or is it going to be available globally and along with this we have this particular version number here so we have this version number which is given as v1 and we have these two properties here now let's look at the first one that is the served property now what does this served property means so you can have multiple versions of the same definition right you can have multiple versions of the custom resource definition that you're defining so this probably would be a v2 a v3 or a v4 but there can be only one definition that can be served at a time so for this we have to set this as true to specify that this version of the definition is going to be served. Then we have the storage property, which specifies that what type of resource instances or what version of the ins resource instance would be stored into the Kubernetes database. Now let's go back to this name part. Now this name part has to be of a particular format. Now what is this particular format? This format says that it has to be the plural name dot the group ID. That's the reason I first explained the spec section wherein we have this group ID. So this group ID is here and then we have the plural name here. So now this is the metadata or basically the definition you could say of our custom resource definition. Now let's look at the main part that we are more interested in. That is the schema part. So we have the schema which has been defined using open API version three and then it has this particular structure. Now, if I look at this particular structure, you might find it pretty much same or similar to what we usually define in a deployment or, or any resource definition also. So if you see here, the top level is an object and which has properties like the API version, the kind, metadata and spec. Now, if you see this, this is pretty much similar to what we have here. We have the API version, 
the kind metadata and spec that's it so this is like the boilerplate that you need basically to actually define your schema so you need these four properties at the minimum and then after that in the specs property i'm creating my own property now the spec section i've specified it as an object and that object has a property called as my own property so this is the custom property that i've specified and it is of the type string here now this is the basic most minimalistic custom resource definition that i've specified here which has its own property like a custom property here which is of the type string now first what we are going to do is we are going to actually deploy this custom resource definition onto a kubernetes cluster so now i have a kubernetes cluster that i'm running on my local system and this is a cluster that has been created using k3s now on a Mac system, you can run a Rancher desktop. This is yet another desktop client through which you can actually run a Kubernetes cluster or you could also run a Docker desktop, which would actually also allow you to create a Kubernetes cluster. So now let's actually go to the command line. Now here I have my CRD, which is this CRD that has been present from this folder. And what I'm going to do next is first of all, let's check if the cluster is up. If you see here, my Kubernetes cluster is running. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually deploy this particular custom resource definition. So kubectl minus F, my CRD, YAML. My CRD has been deployed and this is the name that we had given. So now let's actually get our CRD. So kubectl get CRD. And if you see here, my CRD with the group name is present here. So this is now been created now. Now actually a custom resource definition has been deployed to the cluster. Let's actually look at creating an instance. So let's go back here. And I have this my resource instance. Now in my resource instance, I just have the simplest thing. I specify the API version. I specify the kind. I specify the metadata, wherein this is the name of my custom resource definition instance. And then I have this one single property that we had defined here. Now, if you see here, we have these two parts here. If you see the mapping here, this is the API version that we specified here. This is the kind that we specified here. This is the metadata that we specified here. And this is my own property, which came from the spec section here. So this is how it actually maps to the open API definition that we had specified in my CR. So now what we're going to do is let's actually create our first custom resource definition instance. So let's go back here and I'm going to say kubectl apply my resource instance. My resource instance has been created. So let's actually now use a kind that is this kind and query Kubernetes. And as you can see, a custom resource instance has been created. Now you can also edit this particular instance as kubectl edit my crd my custom resource instance and as you can see you have the name you have my own property here and you have some annotations that have been put by kubernetes inside the metadata section okay so now what we have done is we defined our custom resource definition we then deployed it onto the kubernetes cluster we then created an instance of that custom resource definition now, actually, when we created this particular instance, nothing really happened. Why? Because we don't have a particular controller for this custom resource definition, right? So in my next video, we'll be creating this particular controller, which actually will do something when a particular custom resource instance have been created. So make sure you subscribe to this particular channel and see you in my next video.